Today we're going to be taking a look at this Channel Plus Model 6110 on-screen ID. Its basic functionality is that it can take a composite video signal coming in and overlay text onto it for the composite video coming out. But its intended purpose was to show caller ID messages on your TV when someone was calling you. So you can see it's got a line in for the phone and what would happen is when someone's calling your phone, it would display the caller ID information right on your TV. So that's a cute trick and everything, but I don't have a landline, and if I did, no one would be calling it. But what I do have is in my home lab, a couple of Raspberry Pis that are constantly streaming episodes over a composite. Things like The Simpsons and Futurama. And I'm running that through some RF modulators that let me tune in on my TVs to certain channels to see that content. And you may have noticed that this thing has a serial port, which means we can control what it outputs to the screen. I thought it'd be an interesting project to try to use this thing to spit out episode metadata whenever the Pi switch between episodes. And believe it or not, we're going to do a lot of software archaeology to get this thing to work. This wasn't easy. There are straight up lies from Channel Plus in this manual about how to interact with this thing. This thing is completely inaccurate. So in order to figure out how to do this, we're going to go look at some DOS and 3.1 example programs that Channel Plus had on their website over 25 years ago. And we'll use that as the source of truth for how to get this thing working. Let's get into it. This will be our basic setup as we get a little more familiar with this thing. So I've got a Raspberry Pi outputting its video over composite, flowing into the Channel Plus, and then back out onto a screen right here. And then the serial port is connected up via a USB converter to the Pi as well. And what we'll do is I'll configure the Pi to just show a black screen so we can see what's going on better. So it's got this button on the side and as you press it, it'll cycle through all the calls that it's saved. It can store up to 45 calls. So here we can see I'm pressing through. This one I really wanna show you guys. So these were just on it when I got it. So <laughs> these are real calls that took place. There we go, Fat Boy's Pizza. I wonder if they're still around. I feel like it's not good if the pizza place is calling you. And you can see I waited long enough and it just went away. And so let's cycle through again. And then if you get to the end, it's end of log. And if you hold down the button, it'll delete them. But I don't want to, I kind of like it. <laughs> I kind of like that it has some of that on there. All right, so to try to interact with this thing, we're gonna use a terminal program called Minicom. Minicom is a modem control and terminal emulator program, which is really nice for interacting with serial devices. So if you've seen any of my other videos where I'm interacting with serial stuff like the LOM ports on the Sunfires, I'm almost always using Minicom. So you start it up with dash S and you can get into the configurations. You go to serial port setup. At the top there, you see I'm on the, my serial device is dev TTY USB zero. I happen to know that's the device that tran translates to the USB to serial converter I have. If you're following along at home, you'll have to know which device to point at. And then it's almost always that you only need to worry about column E here. So the baud rate, the parity bit, and the stop bit. And so the default, a, a pretty typical one is 9,600 bits per second. Uh, so let's go take a look at the manual and see what this Channel Plus wants. All right, in the section on linking to a PC, it states, 19,200 baud, 8 bit, no parity, one stop bit. So those are our settings. Okay, so what does that actually mean though? So when you're dealing with this serial stuff, you're going to have a speed, the baud rate, and then you're going to have a at least a couple other configuration options, and then there's tons more that you nearly in, in practice nearly never have to worry about. So the manual said 19,200 for our baud rate, 8 bits. No parity, one stop bit. You'll you'll commonly see that written as the baud rate here, eight n one. That's what that means. And in practice, this is just defining the structure of each data packet in the stream of data going across the serial connection. So, for example, we're always going to have a start bit. These boxes are bits. <laughs> we're always going to have a start bit, I think. And then it's saying, okay, I have eight data bits. So one through eight right here. This is where you would actually encode, you know, the letter A or something. And then 
it'll say no parity bit. So sometimes you'll have a ninth bit, which is used for parity to know if the other eight bits are correct or got corrupt during transfer. That's beyond the scope of me dicking around with this ID, caller ID thing. Uh, but the channel plus doesn't want a parity bit, so we don't have one here. And then one stop bit, meaning we'll have a bit, an, a ninth bit, so to speak, which means this little packet of eight bits is at its completion. So that's a, a really high level overview of, of what's going on there. Let's plug these settings into Minicom. All right, so now we're back in Minicom and we know what settings we need. So we'll go back into serial port setup and line E here, we're gonna bump that up to 19200. Uh, I know this screen is overwhelming if you don't know where to look, but <laughs> I'm editing this here. And you can see we're already defaulted to 8N1. That's a super common serial setting for a lot of stuff. So with all that set, I can go to exit. And now we're sitting at a terminal. And theoretically, as we type, it's going over the serial line and should be going to the device. All right, so I'm typing hello there. Nothing. Let's try, let's turn on local echo. Hello, hi, YouTube, <laughs> nothing. So at this point I double checked the manual and then I started looking at all these different settings thinking maybe it was set wrong, hardware, flow control, software, flow control, there's a million different settings, making sure I was on the right serial device. And eventually I was like, okay, well, let's bump the speed down. So. 9600 is a super common setting. Did that, and then I started typing. And you see all that stuff on the screen? <laughs> like, is that a car or something? And so, yeah, you can see what I'm typing in the terminal here. It just rolls over if you start over. And what's super bizarre is, like, those musical notes, that's not just ASCII. Let's have a look at the manual again. So this thing claims, if you send it ASCII codes 32 to 253, they'll just be displayed on the screen. And as a refresher, here's the ASCII codes, you know, it's just the alphabet. <laughs> nothing, nothing special, exactly what you would expect. But obviously, that's not what we're seeing on the screen, and that's, those definitely are not ASCII characters. <laughs> so I played with a bunch of settings, got nowhere started scouring the manual again and way down in the corner here I noticed they say do you have software to use with the 6110 and they say yes in fact they have a website so let's head over to the hottest website from 1998 the one and only channelplus.com and uh, if we have time at the end of the video we can read about how do I watch DSS in the bedroom sounds inappropriate but anyway at the bottom here there's a link called misc and it says on screen display with caller ID. Go there. And wouldn't you know it? Zoom me in a little bit here. Here, here's our guy with links to the, the example software. <laughs> so right away I clicked this, the larger or one of the larger ones, the executable winzip. And wow. So I was on such a single track mine. I was sitting here grinding away about how I'm gonna solve this and Finally went back and decided to try the others, and wouldn't you know it, all three other links work. The archive has scraped the zip files. And so even more interesting is the two that have E in them, one of which we can't get our hands on, is just the, the compiled source. The other two are the actual source code for how to interact on Windows 3.1 and from MS-DOS with, <laughs> with the 6110 which is like more than I could have even hoped for. So that's incredible. So let's dive into this code. Okay, so here's the contents of those three zip files. The one with E in the name was literally just the compiled executables. So those aren't very interesting. Though I put them on an XP machine and they do run, but I couldn't be bothered to <laughs> get this thing hooked up through my VM. Let's take a look at the Windows 3.1 source first. So if we take a look at info, contrary to the manual, it says 8-bit serial data at 4,800 bits per second, which is interesting. However, if we go look at the actual code, 
this is the relevant part where it opens up the com port com is a serial device in the windows world and it claims no other com parameters need to be set since the 6100 accepts data at 19200 an1 <laughs> which is different from what the infotech said different from our manual and we know that's not true so my hunch is that this windows program probably just doesn't even work which is interesting now let's look at the dos here's the dos source code it also says 4800 bits per second so i think you can see where we're going here even more interesting it starts talking about ASCII characters 128 to 253 are displayed as special graphic symbols and pictures. Some codes use two or three characters together to form an icon. Obviously, that's what we're seeing at a bad baud rate, so it's all gibberish and nonsense. So the thing is capable of all these special icons for some reason, even I don't maybe caller ID did that. But the manual I have that came with it says nothing about that. <laughs> Super interesting. And then finally, when we go and look at the DOS code that opens the COM port, we can clearly see it's opening at 4800. So this was super useful. I would probably would have come to this conclusion eventually just messing around with settings, <laughs> but let's go try 4800 and see what happens. All right, we are back in Minicom. Got you pointed at the TV. Let's go to our serial port setup and bump this down to 4800. And look at that. It works. I can do new lines. So awesome. And then I think when you wrap around yeah it just clears the screen so there's a bunch of command characters that are in upper ascii which aren't actual keys i can press on the keyboard let me show you a couple of the pertinent ones they let you clear the screen and make the text blink and stuff like that and i can't really get it to work in minicom so i'll show you i'll show you how i got it to work all right so it has all these function control characters which are in upper ascii and an important one is that one X24 display reset. So let's figure out how we can send that to the screen. All right. So like I was saying, after 30 seconds of Googling in Minicom, I couldn't figure out how to send ASCII control character 24 to the screen. <laughs> but since we're in Linux, we can actually just dump stuff right to the serial device. However, like before, we're probably operating at the wrong baud rate. And the way you deal with this is a program called STTY. So STTY, you can pass it a file and ask it information. None of this stuff really matters in our case. Uh, somewhere in here is the 8N1 settings with different names. But we care about speed, 19,200. 19, Despite what Channel Plus says, that's not correct. So what you can do is bring it down to 4800. Let's try our echo again. And on the screen there, as you can see, it's back. So what we can do is use printf to give it the octal of the ASCII code 24. There's probably some incantation to give it 24, but I don't know how to do it. And the octal of 24 is 30. So we can print 30 to dev TTY USB and our screen cleared. So now we're getting somewhere. Well, let me play around with some of these control characters, see if I can make it do anything interesting. Well, 
I think that's as cool as it's getting. But the whole point of this is to see the text overlays on a real TV, not just on some composite signals on an old computer monitor. So I've got the Pi streaming content here. It's videos going through the 6110 for text overlay. And all of that is flowing into another Channel Plus device, an RF modulator. So it takes these composite inputs and outputs all of that on a TV channel of your choosing. And as you can see, that's working just fine. Let me show you what I'm thinking. All right, so on those Raspberry Pis I was showing you that are streaming TV series out, they're running some software that I actually wrote <laughs> called Go Home Lab Cable. It's on GitHub, but I'm gonna tell you right now, as I'm looking at it, it's missing a bunch of features that I thought I had and I'm pretty sure I uploaded a bad version to GitHub and lost all my changes. So yeah, if you like what you see, that'll motivate me to clean this thing up. I haven't touched it in a few months. But basically, it hosts a server that is streaming this stuff with VLC. So it's got this notion of networks, and by default, it's called the Home Lab Cable KHLC, K Home Lab Cable Network. There's only one. I thought that'd be cute. Uh, and then you can ask the network about channels. Let me run that through JQ for you guys. So this thing has the notion of two channels, one of which is live. That's what you see playing right here. That's this one. And then another one that's not live, but behind the scenes, every 30 minutes, it's just rotating through episodes so that as if you weren't watching a real channel. Anyway. <laughs> it's kind of half-baked at the moment, but what we can do is go like this and say play next and we should see the switch. There it goes. Starting up a new, the, ne the next episode. Um, also, it's got this web interface it's hosting that eventually you'll be able to play next and control everything and set everything up and it's like totally broken because I lost the code that was working. <laughs> we'll get to that maybe in another video. Anyway, so I think you can imagine where I'm going with this. Imagine when one episode switches over, automatically something like that shows up on the screen. And that way I can use this to show the current episode information while I'm watching TV. Well, I had been hoping to get a little past the hand wavy <laughs> stage implementing this text overlay into the Go Home Lab cable project. But as I mentioned, I seem to have misplaced the latest version of that code. It's definitely not what's on GitHub. So maybe that'll motivate me to make it better. Uh, it's never been good to begin with. <laughs> anyway, I actually have a whole video going over this RF stuff and getting the Raspberry Pi streaming video with VLC over to TV channels. If you want to check that out, I'll put it in the link in the description. But in the meantime, this was super fun to figure out. Uh, kind of a cool little piece of equipment here. And I had a good time looking at the 25-year-old Channel Plus source code to figure out what the right baud rate would be. And it's incredible that the Internet Archive had that. If you haven't donated to the Internet Archive before, consider it. I did for the first time this year, even though I've been using it for years and years. It's an incredibly valuable resource, and a lot of my videos wouldn't be possible at all if it didn't exist. But anyway, we'll have more coming, and I really hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one.